Welcome to Great Chefs of the World, a culinary survey featuring premier chefs from around the globe. This time, an appetizer is prepared by Manfred Buchinger in Vienna, Austria. It's called hot curdle chanterelle soup. Then the entree is served at Le Mer restaurant in the Halikulani Hotel in Honolulu. At taping time, the executive chef was George Mavrofilosites, and he offers a variation on cooking with salt, onaga in herbed rock salt crust. From Buenos Aires, Dolly Irrigan does an exemplar of the great Italian dessert, tiramisu. It's soft sponge cake, moistened with coffee and amaretto, containing a caramel mascarpone cream filling. For 30 years, the Hotel Intercontinental has wined and dined famous and not so famous visitors to Austria with typical Viennese flair. And since 1981, Chef Manfred Buchinger has been there to help them. That's when he returned to his native Vienna from extensive training with some of the great chefs of France, Holland, England, and Switzerland. He helped the Intercontinental open the Four Seasons restaurant as head chef in 1986. And since 1993, has put his obvious good humor to the test, supervising 62 chefs in Austria's largest kitchen. He begins his menu with a dish that features the delicate, nutty flavor of chanterelle mushrooms in hot curdled chanterelle soup. Chef Buchinger begins with a half liter, or about four cups of clear vegetable broth, to which he beats in three whole eggs. Da werden drei Stück Eier hineingeschlagen. Das Ganze verschlagen. Chopped chives, beim Schnittlauch schneiden muss man nicht immer hinschauen, Schnittlauch schneiden muss man nicht immer hinschauen. Next, the chef chops chanterelle mushrooms. For most of the world, chanterelles are costly imports. Not so for the Viennese, who can find them in the wild on hills outside of the city, as well as in some of the markets. For best results, Chef Buchinger suggests mushrooms that are somewhat dry and firm. Also nicht matschig oder gatschig. The soup is seasoned with salt and freshly ground pepper, and the chopped parsley and chanterelles are added. Pepper. Einen Teil des Schnittlauchs. Die Eierschwammel dazugeben. Mahlen im Kümmel. The seasoning is finished with ground caraway seed. Abschmecken. Nun wird die Suppe in die kalten. The soup is ladled into serving bowls before being covered with plastic wrap 
and placed in a water bath where it will cook for between seven and ten minutes at low heat. Mit Klarsichtfolie abdecken. Das Wasser soll so leicht perlen, hineinstellen, zudecken und nicht zu heiß, es soll ganz langsam ziehen, das dauert ca. 7 bis 10 Minuten. The cooked soup is then uncovered and removed from the bain marie. Okay. It's just a bit heiß, da. Huh? Muss man ein bisschen vorsichtig sein. and garnished with chopped chives for presentation. George Mavrothalocetes proves that enormous cooking talent is not the only attribute in making a great chef. There's also energy. Covering him in the kitchen was like following an athlete. His entree, breathlessly shot, is Onago, a long-tailed pink snapper in an herbed salt crust. So on, on this recipe, I use, uh, I use Onaga, which is uh, certainly one of the best fish you find in the ocean. Is, uh, uh, is a red uh, snapper, long-tailed snapper, which has nothing to do with the red snapper you have in the mainland. It's not the same fish, it's not the same quality of fish. This is really, it's very close to the sea bass, maybe about the flesh or the white sea bass. So this is one of the best fish you find in the ocean. I believe it's also one of the best fish you, you find in the world. It is really exceptional, very delicate and very nice. So this is the Opaka Paka. So what I use, I want to protect, I want to protect this beautiful quality of fish from the heat of the oven. So I use a, a crust with this salt, salt crust with a little bit flour, uh, egg white to, to mix together. And I put inside fresh thyme and rosemary. So I get in the, in the fish the flavor from the crust, the thyme and the rosemary. And the crust give iodine flavor to the fish, which is a wonderful. Huh? Olive oil starts the sauce. So I put some shallot, uh, olive oil, shallot. Garlic. Oh, this is a very easy and very, very fast sauce to do. Tomatoes peeled and seeded are diced. Well, I never use a chicken stock, of course. I barely, I don't like too much stock, 
because they are always giving the wrong flavor to what you do. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't want really to use fish stock and to give a fishy flavor to my sauce, which does. And uh, so what I use instead of to use a fish stock, you can use clam juice if you like. Sometimes clam juice is no bad. I use a nage, which is a vegetable broth with white wine. That's all. I'm, talk I'm talking about professional kitchen, but even if you cook at home, it's nice. Uh, if you don't have to use any stock because sometimes you don't know how to make stock or you don't have time to do it. So this, I believe, is very nice to know how to cook without any stock. OK, now I'm going to do the fish. A tea leaf, traditionally used for wrapping food at luau's, is on the dough. Or what I put, I put a tea leaf uh, on the bottom, which is going to protect the fish from the salt. Of course, I don't want my fish to be salty. So I protect the, the flesh from the salt with the tea leaf and the top with the skin. And when I'm going to open the, the crust, I'm going to remove the skin. So the fish is not salty, it just has the iodine flavor from the salt. And uh, I put some spinach. Everything, you know, everything I try to do in the kitchen is not for, is not for the look. I mean, I don't say I don't care about the look. I care about the look. But I always say to my cook, don't, don't spend too much time decorating, spend more, more time cooking. Uh, the, the idea also to put spinach is to make sure the fish doesn't steam too fast uh, in the contact of the oven. So it's going to stay moist, protected by the spinach also, and this makes a beautiful garnish with the flavor of the fish inside, which is fantastic. Of course, this recipe is going to be carved on the dining room. So I have to make sure my, my fish looks like a fish just because we arrive in the dining room with the fish and carve the fish. So I put one more piece of salt crust on the top. Now I'm going to carve which is very easy, I mean it's not something really difficult to do. An egg wash covers the fish. More coarse salt is added, and it is baked at 375 degrees for 25 minutes. Why I mix chives? Fresh herbs are added to the sauce. Tarragon. Green onion. Shovel. And of course, uh, ogo, which is very important. Ogo is seaweed. And the fish, fish is ready. So we carve the fish. Of course, when you carve the fish, you have to make sure that you don't 
you don't uh, put any rock salt inside. Um. And now, of course, you remove the skin. And the fish is not salty at all. Even uh, you, uh, you notice I have to put salt in the, in the salt to make sure you have some salt on the recipe. And you come on the table. I take the spinach. And of course I put the spinach on the top. Dessert is done at Dali restaurant in Argentina. Dali Irrigan was born in a province of Buenos Aires and reflects an ethnic background of French, Spanish, and Italian, which culinarily covers some serious territory. Her dessert sprouts from classic Italian roots, tiramisu. The filling includes heavy cream beaten to the soft peak stage and also egg yolks and sugar, which are beaten to a pale yellow color. Then mascarpone, or Italian cream cheese, is added. A popular sweetener in Argentina is a caramel paste called dulce de leche. It is incorporated into the filling. The whipped cream is folded in. This is a cake called soft crust. It's a sort of sponge cake, and the chef cuts discs for the tiramisu. The cake is moistened with a mixture of strong coffee and amaretto. A dollop of the caramel concentrate goes on top of the first layer. The next layer is the caramel cream. The remaining slices are cut in half and the top becomes another layer. This layer is moistened and another layer of the cream finishes the tiramisu. Refrigerate until service.
The simple chocolate sauce contains water, cream, sugar, and unsweetened cocoa powder. The ingredients are stirred constantly with a spatula. Then the chef switches to a whisk to finish the sauce. A thick, clear syrup is spread onto a silicone pad. It goes into a 400-degree oven for two to three minutes or until bubbly. The syrup is cooled on the pad, then transferred to a stainless steel surface where it cools quickly. A piece of the caramel will be used as garnish. In presentation, cocoa powder is sprinkled on the tiramisu. Thank you.